that, you know, I want to tell you to sit down. But then when you do that, it just starts getting all over me. It doesn't take much right now. There, there, there really is an open heaven. You're fasting and you're praying. This coming together, this just, just this, this preponderance of praise that is going up from here, day after day, it's having an effect. It's making it where it's easy to touch Him. When you have a desire to touch Him, you can come, hallelujah, and your emotions are kind of dragging. Physically, you're kind of a little on the worn out side. But as soon, hallelujah, as you start clapping, as soon as you start praising, as soon as you start exalting the name of Jesus, there is virtue, hallelujah, there is strength, hallelujah, there is help, there is understanding, there is wisdom. Amen. You may be seated. I am kind of big on this asking business. Mentioned it the other night. I'm not going to uh, get into theologically, this is talking about the latter rain. But I will tell you that God has given me permission to make application of this passage into our present time. It may have had, it may have application to generations past and it may have application if the Lord tarries to generations future. I'm personally of a pretty strong persuasion that we may very well be the generation on whom the ends of the earth have come. But I know there's lots of generations have felt that way. But for sure, I believe that we are a people to whom God would allow us to take this passage into our bosom. And as I look at this, it says, ask ye of the Lord rain. I think that we understand that throughout the scripture, that water is at times used as a type of the spirit. And that rain has to do with a spiritual outpouring. It has to do with God's blessing. And it says here, again I repeat, ask ye of the Lord rain. And so I just ask the simple question. Who would like to have God's rain? Who believes that our society that our city, that our country, that our world could benefit by some good old-fashioned Pentecostal, apostolic, Holy Ghost, Jesus' name, one God, reign. Hallelujah. This is the Lord God. This is ask ye of the Lord. Who is the Lord? He's the creator God of heaven and earth. He's the one who robed himself in flesh. Hallelujah. And came and made himself manifest that we might understand who he is and how he loves. It was difficult to understand his love from the Old Testament perspective. So God showed up in flesh and he gave us lessons in how he loves. You wanted to know how he forgive? They brought the woman caught in adultery, throwed it at his feet, and we see him right in the dirt. And then he says, woman, where are thy accusers? He did not condone her sin, but he said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and 
sin no more. You wanted to see his compassion? He meets a funeral procession of a widow, of a mother that's lost her, her husband and now her son. And Jesus stops and says, arise. That God has now said, I pour out my spirit. I have been here with you. Now I shall be not some other person. He said, I will. The one who said, let there be light. And there was light. The one who said, let the moon come forth. I ordained that there will be tides, that there will be seasons. And it was so. That God says, I will pour out my spirit. It's going to come like the rain. There is a former rain, but there is something that's going to be greater than a former rain. There is coming a latter rain. There is coming a deluge of my spirit. There is coming a saturation of my spirit. I am going to pour out. And here's what I love. What determines the rain? Geographical location? Education? Bank account? Balance? God is an all-inclusive God. He doesn't make things complicated where only a few qualify. He breaks it down so simple in this passage that he says that what determines rain is simple asking. Asking. And who can ask? Anyone who wants the rain. Anyone that gets a hunger. Anyone that gets a divine dissatisfaction. Anyone that can't take it, that when you drive down the street, that you see young people and you know they're lost, you know that the culture that's being fed them through all the media is not building up their life, but it's tearing down their life. And you start going, God, what we need is some rain. What we need is some apostolic Holy Ghost rain. When we start looking at the divorce record, we get a divine irritation in our spirit and say, I know what we need. We need rain. We need rain. We need rain. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God. We don't need more counseling. We don't need more psychiatrists. We don't need more psychology. What we need is rain. We need old fashioned Holy Ghost rain. Anybody in this house that would concur that what we need is rain. Now, when do you ask for rain? Scripture is informative. You ask for rain in the time of the latter rain. I grew up in a farming community, worked on the farms in the summer. And I know that it's referring to a, 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 a time in the, heart, in, the, in, the, in the farming season that the crop has passed the critical point of planting. It's hard to preach this in Singapore. Uh, because they think that hamburgers come from just from the grocery store. They don't know where they originate from. We don't have farms in Singapore. I don't, there's no place in Singapore that you can go and see a cow eating grass except at the zoo. And kids go to the zoo and they go, wow, that's a cow? That's where we get milk, mama. Unbelievable. But I think you folks can understand. There 
is a critical point of time that the crop needs moisture, and it's in the early 